So it is um, 8.32 a.m. on November 20th, and I am calling the meeting of the Community Resources Committee of the Town Council to order. We are on video, um, for, so it's being recorded for future broadcast purposes, I believe, by the town. Um, we are going to, uh, we'll see if public show up later, but for now I'm going to say there are no public here. Our first item on the agenda generally is public comment. Oh, there's one public. Do you have public comment as we start our agenda? <laughs> uh, general or to a specific item? Uh, the items that will take public comment. Okay. Um, you can get settled if you want. <laughs> I was just in the middle of public comment. So we're going to pass over public comment for just a minute while I make the other announcements. We don't have presentations, which is item number five. Our minutes we are not going to deal with today. Um, I received a copy of them late last night. Um, so instead of trying to get everyone to review them before 8.30 this morning, we will get that on the next packet. Um, I don't believe I have any other announcements at this time. Um, which was item number seven on the agenda. So I'm going to hold not anticipated. I don't think we have any of that myself, but we'll get to that at the end. And so then we will move back to public comment. The revised agenda missed, missed labeled which ones we'll take specific public comment on when we get to them. So I'm going to announce which ones those are with the revised agenda. I forgot to change them. Both discussion items, which are the master plan update discussion and the downtown parking working group priority recommendations discussion will take public comment at the time we discuss that. Um, but any other public comment is welcome now and it looks like we have someone who would like to make public comment. So Ms. McGowan, you are welcome. So I, I've made a public vow never to make a comment on parking. But um, so I'm not, but actually it's just something I've been thinking about um, that maybe the CRC and the planning board should have liaisons to each other. Um, or, you know, I was going to suggest this also to the planning board somehow because the work is so intertwined and I just come because I, I see how important and interrelated it is. And if you're working on the master plan or zoning changes and, you know, big issues involving farmland or ac land acquisitions or management plans for, you know, conservation areas, all those would be in the purview of the planning board. It would probably draw on each other's expertise. and understand so that's it I, I we normally do not respond to public comment but um, because we had a discussion and announcement at the council meeting on liaison scheduling on Monday I will reiterate that which is um, our outreach communications and appointments committee is working on discussing which committees the council might suggest having liaisons to and then and the announcement was that I believe for December 16th the goal is to have a recommendation from that committee to the town council on which committees it recommends the council appoint liaisons to liaisons will not be appointed at that meeting um, but we're moving forward with that we had a first reading of modification to the liaison rules of the town council too on Monday night um, so I, I just thought, even though we normally don't comment, since that was an announcement, I would, I would reiterate that announcement at this meeting in case people don't watch all six hours of that meeting on Monday night to get to that announcement. So, yeah, yes, um, Andy. Maybe I should turn this over to Steve, who was chair at the time, but um, we did have some discussion in this committee about the relationship with the planning board uh, and you, as chair at the time, had taken some steps, Steve, and uh, we did have um, at least a, a couple of times when members of the committee did meet with members of the uh, zoning subcommittee. I'm trying to think if um, Janet, well, I think you were at least appointed at, at the time, but so we, one of the things we did is we used to meet just before, so just before the zoning subcommittee, for the purpose of liaise, whatever the verb is, liaising. liaising. <laughs> so therefore, um, people who would be coming to town hall for the zoning subcommittee meeting could come earlier and participate that way. And then similarly, people who are on the CRC could stay and attend the zoning subcommittee, then the planning board meetings. 
So unfortunately, we stopped that schedule because of me, because I teach Wednesday afternoons. So that no longer became viable. But as we consider dates, times for our meetings in the spring, I, you know, I thought that that worked out relatively well. And we did have some joint, I think you were on, but we did have some jointly called meetings with the CRC and the zoning subcommittee. We had one, we had one that was mindfully called and um, had full participation, and then we had other ones that were simply noticed that way in case, in case there was participation. Yep. Kennedy, it looks like you want to say something. Yeah. No, I, I think that it is an important issue to discuss because we also have a, a rule that we adopted within the council that to the extent possible when there's a zoning change that requires a hearing that we would seek to take advantage of the statutory um, ability to have a joint hearing and only have to post one hearing and so it creates um, the need to really establish a relationship um, that is different than the normal relationship with other boards and committees because of the uh, uh, fact that w things are being developed within the planning board that then need the approval of the council uh, which is reached through this committee. I think that it's a matter that um, both the planning board and the council do need to look at very carefully, but um, I appreciate uh, Janice raising it because it does provoke us to um, have that discussion again. Yep, so we are going to move on. I forgot to make one announcement um, which relates to the agenda change. I just wanted to let people know why we removed the, originally the agenda had an action item of the discussion of the climate action goals that were pro proposed by the Energy and Climate Action Committee um, pr on potential referral of the town council. That was not referred to us because the town council voted to adopt them on Monday night. So without the referral and with them already adopted, it was removed from this agenda. But I wanted to be, let anyone potentially looking at an original agenda know why it was removed from that agenda. Um, that brings us to discussion item A, the master plan update. Welcome, Dorothy. Um, we received a referral on Monday night, on November 18th, from the council, actually it's not a referral, we were directed to um, work jointly with the planning board to recommend a process for updating and adopting the master plan in accordance with Charter Section 8, 9.8. .8. The charter requires the town council at some point to adopt the master plan. There is a master plan that has been adopted by the planning board. It was adopted a long time ago, um, years ago. And so this is this direction from the town council is to figure out how to get from that master plan that's been adopted to the council getting to adoption. Um, and so I'd like to structure this conversation first one with one specific question that we want to answer and then move on to a second question. And the first question is, since it has already been adopted by the planning board, the council has, in some sense, two options. It has the option to adopt as is without going back to the planning board and asking for any changes or anything. We can just say, we're good, let's adopt it. So the CRC, I see, has an ability to recommend to the council to just adopt as is or the CRC can make a recommendation that says we would rather not adopt as is, we would rather see some changes before presenting it, before it's presented for adoption to the council. Um, and so the first question I see is which of those happen? Which of those would CRC recommend? Because if it's adopt as is, it's, it, there's not really much to work with the planning board at this point. If it is not, then we need to discuss how we're going to work with the planning board, what we might want to see updated and all of that. So. That's the first question I want us to discuss and potentially come to a resolution on. And Steve had his hand up. So Steve. <laughs> I think there are probably infinite options, but one of them, since it is the planning board by state law that is the generator and approver of master plans, and then we have this added 
endorsement or, or I'm sorry, whatever the word is, adoption by the town council, one thing we could do, we could certainly work collaboratively, that's what the directive said, but you could also, we could also say to the planning board, this can be your process. So in other words, we'd like you to review your own, your own master plan and come back to the CRC with where you see the, you know, what's the current state of the master plan? So that's another option. Any thoughts on these initial options? Um, I thought that we had said that, uh, for example, sustainability is not in the master plan and that we have to um, rethink where that goes and if that, at least examine what that does to the plan as written. And it's a little early in the morning for my brain at this time, but I thought there were several other items that we had agreed upon that we needed to look at again in terms of the master plan. But um, Steve's point is, you know, things don't have to just go in a straight line. They can go two places at once. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the planning board should look at it again. Our role is different from the planning boards in that we're supposed to have a more inclusive perspective, but they're more um, knowledgeable about details. So I think it would be good for both bodies to be looking at it. And then the planning board to uh, come to us and um, we would have a you know, good conversation. And then we have to make recommendations to the town council. But I thought that's kind of what you had, we had kind of, come to that point already, but I'm not sure. It is what I had been talking to the planning board chair about, um, but it's not my decision. It's, <laughs> it's, it's a recommendation of CRC as to whether we want to recommend to the council that it seek updates before adoption or whether it just wants to adopt without updates at this point. So I'm hearing from you, Dorothy, that you'd rather not recommend adopting as is. Right. That's okay. Any other thoughts on that? Andy. I mean, the only thing that I could think of for um, is to say that we're adopting as is for the time being, recognizing that it has been a valuable plan developed through a careful process and that many aspects of the plan have guided the planning board and the town meeting for a long period of time and how it's been proceeding since its um, initial uh, formulation and uh, but at the same time uh, I guess this is maybe there's three points the second thing is in the uh, in discussing this briefly with the um, zoning subcommittee that time there was a little bit of discussion that, that we had about the planning board and that conversation um, about the master plan and generally I think that people feel that the core of the master plan is, was well developed and it's been really solid, but that um, there are pieces that we might want to look at as a community. And it's really a community process that needs to take place. Uh, so it's sort of going in the direction of if we did say, yes, we like the plan as it's been, but that we, um, all plans need review and that um, in doing so, we are um, both saying that the core plan has been developed and is um, functioning well for the town, but does need to be reviewed as all plans do. And um, we encourage that process to go forward. Steve. So just following that thread, that's another option is that we could recommend adoption, but then also recommend that there be a much more rigorous sort of report carding every blank so that we know, so that we have some idea how the issues in the master plan are basically affecting town policy or, or actions that the town is taking. So that, that so we, we did go through this exercise in the summer where different parts of the master plan were presented and um, Dave and Chris and others, you, you know, tried to give us updates, which was helpful, but I'm not sure that everyone else, you know, knew what those, 
achievements have been. But so, so for me, that's maybe a missing link is of, you know, sort of the rigorous report carding of what we've actually done and how that relates to the, to the master plan. So we've got four members here, and I've heard three different things from three different members. <laughs> um, so I think it, it's, it's ripe for discussion of, I've heard the potential to recommend adopting right now without recommending changes at this time, but then continue on and say to the council, we recommend adopting now, but we also recommend a request to the planning board or an allowance of us to continue working with the planning board, however we want to word it, um, for a review of that and a potential update based on, I guess, Andy didn't say this, but based on sort of the standard length of time master plans sit before being reviewed, not rewritten, but reviewed. Um, I've heard from Dorothy, don't do that, do the review before the adoption. Mm -hmm. and, and I've heard a do the adoption, maybe do that review that Andy said, but also we would like to receive potentially an in-depth report of where we stand with its implementation maybe. I, I think that that would be how you might word that um, implementation. Um, those are, I think two of them could be combined into one. Um, the other one is sort of the opposite, sort of a different track. And so I'd like to hear discussion on what people are thinking between sort of those two. Dorothy. The master plan was not completely um, accepted. Uh, part of the process had, had, did not go through. And yet, it has been guiding Amherst for quite a while. So I would think it would be, just to me it does not make sense since it's been not officially accepted but has actually been governing things, that it can continue to function in that way but that for us to uh, recommend adopting it before reviewing it in more detail would be strange. And CRC gets new assignments all the time. So I could see it would become very easy to say, oh, well, we can look at that later. And I, I think that part of the task is to look at it now. Um, it, maybe through a small subcommittee, but I really did enjoy the process that we had been um, going through before. So I suggest that we do not approve it now since it's been functioning without that last layer of approval. I guess town meeting didn't approve the, the, mo the latest revised copy, though I think Steve has maybe got some better information on that. So I would say that I would like to continue to look at it and then to, um, with a perhaps a few s small updates, not like a year's worth, but small ones, refer it back to the council. So I, I just want to... Um be clear, the master plan was accepted, adopted, I don't know what the right, right wording is, approved by the planning board. State law requires approval by a planning board in a town. It does not require any other approval. So in theory, or actually in actuality, our master plan, our current master plan has gone through, until we changed governments, every single needed approval in order for it to be in, in effect in our town. It never did receive town meeting approval. The state does not require legislative approval, and so that was not required. It was not done, but it was not required. The reason we as a council have to approve it is because the new charter says the legislative body is to approve it. And so this is trying to get to that last step, but it is a fully functioning document under state law at this time. But, but people have, many people have spoken to me about that lack yes. of that final approval, and we're the body that has replaced town meeting, so I think that we are, we're not gonna reject the master plan, but I think we want to look at it and to make a few changes, and then to do that last step to make it um, clearer. Andy. Yeah. No, I think that it's important, though, to understand uh, and to get the jargon right on this subject, because State law says it is the planning board that adopts it. It was adopted. The fact that it never went before town uh, meeting, um, uh, some members of town meeting were unhappy about that, but their, their unhappiness is ultimately about the legislature that established the statute regarding um, the uh, process for planning 
and it had nothing to do with decisions made within the town. So I think that that anger of some former town meeting members is, uh, was um, unfortunate, but it was based upon uh, not a full understanding or a full acceptance of the law um, as it is. But our job isn't to go backwards, our job is to go forward. And I think that uh, we now have a charter that says something different. Um, and uh, the charter now has the piece that governs and I think that we need to be going forward and put that um, feeling behind. Steve? Yeah. So you guys said everything. So this being Amherst, you'll get opinions about everything. And I know being on the planning board at the time that it was approved, I know, and also being on town meeting, there definitely were comments made at town meeting that town meeting should be the body approving it, but that's not state law. So we follow, Amherst followed state law as it should be doing. Um, and that, you know, that was 10 years ago. And I, I definitely know what that, um, those comments are. The, it is a question that does this, is this master plan, is there a sense that it's not valid because we have not adopted it, even though it is valid? So that would be my inclination to adopt and then come up to, you know, to recommend adopt so that we can sort of get that behind us and then come up with a process for sort of a steady process of review and reporting. So that, I guess that's one sense that there's no time like the present to, you know, add our layer of endorsement to this and then get on with, you know, implementing, reporting, modifying as needed. Andy. And I appreciated, Dorothy, that you brought up the subject of um, sort of the environmental issues that we dealt with on Monday night and they're going to be continuing to deal with as a council in the community. Um, that section of the master plan was uh, developed based upon an understanding of the science of the environment at the time that it was adopted. Um, if there's been any area that there's been uh, a lot of scientific work and change in understanding, it is in that subject and uh, so the whole issue of greenhouse gas emissions was not included even though there are environmental pieces in there, um, but they don't really, it isn't really couched with current understanding. So in, in some ways that's to me um, a really good example of why it's important to review the plan because uh, as uh, our fellow counselor, Ms. DeMont has reminded me both in conversations per, uh, on a one-to-one -one level and at the council uh, that uh, we ought to have a master plan that is based upon current understanding of what the science is and um, uh, look at it from uh, information that we have now. So I'm gonna take the privilege to talk myself as I'm hearing everyone's <coughs> options and thoughts. Um, one thing I see we could potentially, or the difference between sort of the two approaches that I'm hearing, adopt and then seek update or update then adopt, is the timing of this. And I think that's something maybe we need to consider is where do we as a council want to be as we potentially begin considering any zoning changes that might, or other, other bylaws or other measures, it doesn't have to be a zoning change or a bylaw change, in fact, that affects whether the master plan is being implemented. It could be many different things. I mean, the master plan has so many chapters on so many, all this parking that we're t discussing actually relates to the master plan. Um, and all that, we'll get to a little bit of that discussion later. Um, but you know, as we go forward with that stuff being presented to us as a town council, do we want to have already adopted a master plan or do we want to still be sort of in this limbo that Dorothy actually presented fairly well that town council, town meeting members had always 
set as a limbo of, well, the planning board's adopted it, but us legislature has not, and so is it something that we as a legislature, despite it being you know, a valid in-force plan, we haven't said we like it enough to make sure we're following it is sort of some of the arguments that were always made at town meeting. Do we want that limbo to still exist as we start discussing substantive changes and adoptions as keepers of the public way, as other things, or do we want to have said, we're going to adopt this and we're going to, while adopting it, say we know it needs updates, speci specifically in some of these other areas, it's been about 10 years since the planning board adopted it um, or approved it and we recommend at the same time we adopt this one, we recommend that the planning board undertake and the planning department maybe undertake a review of these specific areas over the course of the next year, year and a half so that it can, as they've readily said to us in many meetings, yeah. it should be reviewed every five to 10 years. We recommend we'll adopt it, but we recommend that that review happen. Um, so I think that's that could be one of what guides which way we go here. Do we want to have something to say we're following and we've accepted that as a document we're following when we get these, which are coming fast and furious almost at this point, or do we want to sort of still be in that limbo? Dorothy. Well, um, sometimes I like to do things in a, in a kind of an academic way, which is, there's so many things coming at us. I'd like to concentrate on this for a brief period of time in order to do um, kind of like I'm coming down halfway between the two positions. I could really see a, a retreat, a full day, uh, where we, sp pre we prep for that by actually reading the whole thing over again before that moment so that it's fresh. And sitting down with some planning board members uh, and going through it, not, not the final perfect absolute update that we will be working on, as you say, throughout the year, but to deal with what we think are things that we need to look at right now so that we can feel a little firmer base to our decisions as we go forward. So I, I do want to add um, one thing I didn't add, which is um, the planning board, if we want updates, the planning board would have to also adopt those updates and and in terms of where state law is, I believe it's not us writing those updates. It should be the planning board and the planning department and it would come from them with their prior approval before we see it again. Um, we would hopefully, and that, that would be this next part as we get into what, what that process might look like. Um, Hopefully it's some sort of joint collaboration or, or there's lots of communication there um, so it doesn't come to us as a council and our committee as a surprise of, oh, we just updated it and you've not seen any of it. Um, but I don't, personally, I don't see the CRC doing really any of the writing of it or any of the physical updating of it. It doesn't in my belief with where state law is belong in us at all. Um, and so I, I just wanted to make that clear from my point of view um, and all. So, thoughts? Dave just has oh, a... Dave. I've been listening very carefully and it's, it's interesting with just the four of you, the different opinions, and I'm, I'm kind of extrapolating to 13 counselors <laughs> talking about this, uh, the full council talking about this. Would it be helpful, I have had discussions with my staff about where we think the master plan is and, and what, you know, I, I think in our minds we have discussed some, I would call them, you know, modest updates, but important updates, and you've touched upon a couple of possible areas. I think from staff standpoint, um, it is a little hard to think about the council adopting a master plan from 2010 with some of the um, omissions or, or the changes that have happened in the world and then the changes that have happened in town since 2010. So. Would it be helpful if I just went through a couple of those areas? I, Is this a good time or? I, I think it would, yeah. and um, I think it's a perfect time. Okay, great. Well, let me, and again, 
I, I, I frame this under what we think, I, I don't want these to seem overwhelming because from a staff standpoint, we don't think they are. Just to give you a perspective, you know, we, we are required to do five year updates to our open space and recreation plan. If we don't do those, then five to seven years, then we're not eligible for grants. Now typically, and Steve can correct me on this, but I believe master plan, the recommendation for a master plan is about 20 years. Um, so here we are midpoint of that. We might think about it as a, you know, as, as Steve said, kind of a, a what was your, uh, I wrote it down, uh, kind of report carding on what we've done. Have there been changes in the world, in the region, and in, in town? Um, maybe we look at it as kind of a midpoint, you know, um, uh, additions and editing to it to take us another 10 years. If we think about the council adopting the master plan, does that then mean, I, you know, in one of your options, does that mean we don't revisit it for another 10 years? I can't imagine that because 10 years from now, the world, the region, and the town will have changed even more. So in... Let me just, I can run through these fairly quickly. <clears throat> um, so we've talked about climate change not being referenced. So throughout the document, it would be fairly easy to, you know, um, insert anything related to climate change in the land use, economic development, natural and cultural resources sections, open space and recreation section, and transportation and circulation. So from climate change, we would also get more into what does it mean for Amherst to be a sustainable community. So not only looking at our um, uh, greenhouse gas emissions, but also how do we become a more sustainable and a more resilient community? Because um, we, we, like the rest of the world, need to adopt, uh, adapt to a changing climate. And so those sections could be um, amended, edited to include sustainability and resiliency. Um, change in demographics. So we, the census is in 2020, so we wouldn't, we wouldn't have all of that information, but certainly there's been some demographic changes in Amherst since 2010, so we could do some modest uh, updating of that. You know, for instance, uh, decreasing population of school-age children. We know there's an increase in population of elders. Um, affordable housing issues. Um, certainly, they would be more prominent in a 2020 update to the master plan than they were in 2010. And we've made some progress in areas with affordable housing. Um, so... Um, uh, putting greater emphasis on the need for affordable housing in, a, in an update to the master plan. Um, we would need to add um, uh, reference to our new form of government um, and, and how uh, that works and, and how we got here. Um, the old master plan does not really put much emphasis on an implementation part of it. And that's really, uh, you know, report carding, as Steve referenced. Um, I recall our former planning director saying to me often that in 2010, we believe this was a very strong master plan where we as a community may not have put enough resources uh, and time and energy is really on implementing the strategies in the master plan. So putting a little more emphasis on implementation. Um, Jumping around a little bit, um, how has land use changed since 2010? We've had a number of new developments. So referencing those new developments in our downtown and in our village centers. Um, we've had a number of new initiatives in town. So referencing the net zero energy for municipal projects. Um, we are very close to uh, updating our flood mapping uh, which will be coming to the council in the coming months. Uh, so we should reference that because that will, um, that will have some impact on land use. Um, 
adding reference to things like the marijuana industry. We did not, it wasn't even on the radar screen in 2010. And here we are um, uh, some years later with retail and medical. Um, so there's, there's more, I, and again, some of these could simply, some of these are sentences, adding reference in a sentence or two. Um, but um, Chris Bresprup and I went through, you know, uh, two and a half pages of potential updates to the master plan. But, but again, I don't wanna, I don't wanna say these are, are uh, you know, this is not, m you know, uh, uh, months of, of writing these edits, as Mandy said, I think it, this clearly sits with the planning board as supported by the planning staff. So these, these potential changes would be written with the planning board and the, and the planning staff working together, and then I would envision them coming to you. Um, so those were, those were the major categories, and again, I've got two and a half pages, and, and we've already gone through the master plan and seen where we can insert some things. Steve. Thank you. First, thank you, Dave. Yeah, so that would be a process that I were. So one can also see a process where rather than actually changing the document, that there's simply an appendix. So everything that you just said mm -hmm. could be an appendix that says on page 21, the reference should be town council rather than town meeting. On page 23, you know, we think that this sentence should read that way. And then, then that way, at least the original LaCour um, master plan is intact. So, and of course, there'll be a record of it anyway, but but that would be a process that I would think would be very useful. So the master plan doesn't, uh, there's nothing in the master plan that, say, impedes us from doing the right thing regarding resiliency and climate change, you know, sustainability. So that would be, so there's nothing in there that prevents us from doing good work. Um, yeah, I just wanted to make that point. Andy. Just follow up on that really quickly, but then I really want to turn to actually one other thing, and uh, which will focus us into another, into a very important direction, I think. But uh, the master plan, and this was the discussion I was referencing with um, Councilor DeMont, um, talks about um, green building standards and uh, refers to um, what is known as the LEED standards. That was the state of the art at the time that it was developed. Um, those of us um, who worked on the net zero energy bylaw, uh, we were getting presentations from um, the advocates of that um, change, including um, Chris Riddle, who were pointing out that uh, LEED is no longer the uh, standard of people who really are most um, progressive about trying to address it in that net zero energy is. And, you know, we can't go backwards in time um, and say that uh, the planning board should have thought about the fact that someday the net zero energy would replace LEED, but on the other hand, we have to deal with it. And so that um, is just one thing to point out. Mandy, when the, um, in the report from the Charter Commission to the community that presented the charter, there's this paragraph. Master plan adopted by the town council, not just the planning board. State law requires, um, only requires that a town's master plan be developed and adopted by the planning board. The charter proposal goes beyond this minimal requirement requiring the master plan to be publicly debated and adopted by Amherst, uh, excuse me, adopted by the town council so that it can serve as an agreed upon blueprint for the future direction of Amherst. The master plan will then provide a foundation for planning and zoning decisions helping to ensure that the individual zoning decisions that are made in isolation, but rather in the broader context of town interest. Um, going back to that paragraph in the, um, the commission's report, 
Was there any discussion that you recall about what was meant um, as far as the uh, public engagement piece? Um, is I think the publicly debated um, sort of suggests that. So that that is because of the charter section 9.8, which under section B, the adoption, the master plan or any amendments shall be approved by the planning board and then be submitted to the town manager by the town manager to the town council, which shall hold at least one public hearing thereon. And then the town council shall adopt the master plan with or without amendments. So it, it's referencing that requirement for the town council to hold that public hearing once it's been adopted by the planning board, but before the town council adopts. Does that make sense? Um, planning board is approved by the planning board, adopted by the council. <laughs> yes, Steve. Yep. Uh, uh, you know, it did go through the process, debate, you know, after debate, check. So 10 years later, we can adopt what has been happening yes. in the past. So we would not be, we would be completely within protocol to adopt, you know, the next. We, as long as we held that one public hearing before adoption, this is not the public hearing. Public hearings would need noticed and all, um, and it would be at the council level. Um, but yes, that, that was sort of the first thing I brought as to what our first decision sort of is, is are we going to adopt what the, math, the planning board has already approved as the charter would allow, or are we going to, before we do that process, sort of potentially recommend or request that it be re-looked at for a new approval with you know, modifications? And so that, that's where I felt like we have to make that first decision, and that might actually involve making a decision of approve or adopt with concurrent recommendations to the planning department and the planning board to update and approve n modifications for us to then adopt amendments, however it would look. But it could, that could be one of what recommendations come out of this body is ad adopt as approved by the planning board, but also recommend at the same time continuing doing that formal 10-year review, any updates that need to be there, whatever amount of time that might take our planning side of this, the, the executive to do before it comes back for yet another potential adoption as an update. Dorothy. Well, I think that it would be not that difficult according to what David said, to make the adoptions, which his staff has already, or the revisions. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's start again. I can't see a public hearing in which we say, okay, adopt it as it is, and then we're gonna talk about it later, because people wouldn't go, they just would be annoyed with the whole process, mm -hmm. and that we don't get anything except bad blood. So I think we could do a very practical thing, uh, Go have the committee, you said it's not that going to be difficult to add those revisions. I would say let's do that um, with the planning board acting upon that and then bringing it to us. And then we could say, okay, there's a bigger process that we're doing, but now we've made some updates that brings it a little bit more into where we are as we go forward in, in looking at and re-examining as part of the normal re-examination re and process. But I, I would not want to just say, let's pass it now and have a hearing, because that's like making a farce out of government. What's the point of the hearing if you're not doing anything? Steve. Yeah. Can I have a comment about LEAD? <laughs> Net zero, or what was that? Yeah, so I, I just want to say that LEAD is still very much a standard in, in measuring, you know, um, good building practices. Net zero is a different thing. So net zero is a measure of energy use. LEED is a different kind of a measurement of building performance. They're both good in their own particular ways and they both work in different circumstances. So it's not that one is newer than the other or replaced the other. There's also the Living Building Challenge, LBC. So we have a couple of examples right here in town and other kinds of standards that are coming up. So we don't have to certainly restrict to lead or to any other standard. 
make comments about current building performance measurements, I think is appropriate. So I think I'm gonna try and summarize our conversation before we move on to the next item. Um, whether or not we had a recommendation to make today, we don't need to today. So I'm gonna move that and put it on our next agenda because the first time the council would be able to take up our recommendation is December 16th and we have one meeting additional than today before that. So we have a chance to, to discuss this one more time. But what I'm hearing, I think after Dave's presentation and, dis and, and you know, sort of outlining of what planning staff sees as a potential update um, and what that might include is that maybe we look towards a recommendation of getting a recommendation to the council that includes making those updates or recommending or you know, asking for those updates to be made prior to the town council holding the hearing. If those updates are made, my understanding is the planning board beyond having an integral part of reviewing those updates would have to adopt the master plan revisions if they were revised before it comes to the council again, um, both under our charter, but I believe state law would require that because um, any changes I think need adopted by the planning board. And so maybe if, if that's what I'm hearing is sort of where we're getting to on a potential recommendation, I can attempt to think about what that might look like in an actual recommendation to the town council um, to come back with some language so that we're not making that language up on the fly in a meeting um, and and maybe see what that might look like for our next meeting. Does that sound, sound about as a good summary of where we are? That doesn't mean that's what we've agreed on right now. I just wanna be clear, but that's mm -hmm. what sounds like where we might be leading. And so then it might be helpful to have some sort of language to discuss. Andy. Yeah, it's actually fairly close to what I had been jotting down, uh, though I'd been a little bit more specific in what I was um, recording here. Um, and that was to suggest that you as chair draft a process proposal um, regarding um, how we can move forward with the um, adoption and uh, necessary um, and obvious modifications and that you communicate then with the planning staff through um, the assistant town manager and the planning board regarding um, your um, draft proposal and the, um, with those comments, bring it back to the committee for further discussion. Dorothy? Uh, I think that sounds good and I like the two words, necessary and obvious because that kind of limits what we're talking about now and doesn't stop things from happening in the future. That sound like a plan for everyone? And Dave, yeah? Yeah, if I could just add, and, and um, I really appreciate the conversation today. Um, I wanted to add that, um, you know, there. There certainly has been a couple of conversations with Christine Gray Mullen, the chair of the planning board. Um, I really appreciate, you know, kind of the respect for the process that really it is the planning board that has a major role, the major role in, in, in the master plan, but also an update or revisions to the master plan. And that's also why I kept my comments informal today and really didn't hand anything out to you because I think staff want to be really respectful of both you but also the planning board and not get ahead of the planning board. So I think Christine Brestrup would need to have a similar conversation with the plan, the full planning board um, in the near future about what she believes are some of those areas that uh, need addressing in the master plan. And again, I don't want to make those, I don't want to, make it seem easy or, or you know, this is not an hour of revision. This would take quite a bit of work, but we think it is doable. So I, I just wanted to make a couple of those points about respecting the process, but also not getting ahead of the planning board. Staff yeah. do not want to be ahead of the planning board. So I think that conversation needs to happen at one of their upcoming meetings. And, and I can talk with Christine about that. Okay, thank you. Um, so we will, we will, I, I will do what Andy recommended or sort of what I also summarized. I'll, I'll figure out how that looks. Um, 
for next meeting on December 4th. Before I close this out, we do have a member of the public here. She happens to also to be on the planning board, but I had promised to offer public comment on this matter, and so I want to make sure I do offer that since we do have public here. Um, is there anyone who would like to make public comment on this? I am seeing the shaking of the head of the one member of the public here. So we will then move on to our next matter um, for discussion today, which is a referral. This is an item that was added on late Monday, very late after the council referred it to us um, because we lost an item on our agenda. And this is um, to begin discussions on the priority recommendations that were referred. And I'm just gonna read the referral from the town council for purposes of recording and, mm -hmm. and, and minutes. Um, we had a referral to, the, to refer the downtown parking study and memo from the downtown parking working group to the community resources council with a report back to the town council on the priority recommendations of the downtown parking working group within 90 days. Um, so that was the referral. Um, and we got the whole thing referred to us, but our first order of business is to get that report on the priority recommendations back to the council. And so we have to figure out what that, what the, that report would be. Um, but I'm going to read the priority recommendations too for those that might not have um, it in front of them and all. And, and this has all been linked to the packet, our packet for today. Uh, included documents already on the website. So what our clerk of the council did was just create a document that has the links to those instead of uploading, loading, for example, the master plan in 17 different locations since it's huge. Um, but the three priority recommendations of the downtown parking working group were to create a dedicated parking management position in charge of all transportation policy, planning, and implementation. To cr the second one was to create a dedicated funding source to pay for downtown parking and transportation improvements. And the third one was to implement high visibility and consistent signage in key locations and update the town's parking webpage to be more user friendly. And so we have been tasked with reporting back on these priority recommendations. So we have to figure out what that report might look like, whether that is I guess making recommendations on the recommendations. I'd love to hear what people think about what we are to do with these three priority recommendations in here on for our report back. We can talk about each one individually. We could just talk about a process of what the report might look like. I'm really up for anything right now. Andy. So I guess the uh, question, and Dave, you can help us out with this a little bit, is that um, two of the recommendations really cross over into um, information and action that involves the executive branch of government, too, because the first one um, is creating a position, and we might support that, but um, the administrative structure um, really needs to initiate from uh, the town manager and not f and the council, uh, because that's the way our government is structured. Um, and he did make some reference to that um, during the meeting on Monday. Um, and then the second one was the whole question about reorganization of the um, transportation enterprise fund into a parking district and what are the uh, advantages and disadvantages of doing that. And it might be helpful to get some thoughts from the administrative and budget side um, about those two issues in particular. Uh, and I think that the last thing that I was thinking about is, is that uh, we did get into a little bit of a conversation about the fact that the current enterprise fund um, also supports the bus system. And uh, then there was a reference made to the 
um, that if it's bus systems that serve downtown, that that still might be an appropriate expenditure. Um, most of our buses do go through downtown because that's the nature of how our town is built with the downtown being in the center of a mostly north-south town. So we may actually be there, but it would be helpful to have that kind of information and dialogue going on before we uh, actually say, okay, let's uh, accept the recommendations. And, um, I think that a little bit more discussion and feedback would be helpful. Dorothy? Yeah. Um, I remember we had those three listed on Monday, but I didn't bring those notes. I also have I don't think they're written down on any of the documents as simply as we were given on Monday. Yeah. I have the whole parking report here. I have the piece that was handed to me in bigger print so I could read it here. But as I remember, it was, well, the first one was a person. Yes. Okay, it wasn't just a structure, but it was a person. Two, it was funding. It was the, it was a discussion of a downtown parking benefits district, essentially, okay. versus the transportation fund. Yeah. Okay. And then the third was signs? Signs and web page updates. Okay. So all of this has to do with money. So, and when it was brought up, I, I you know, just reading Paul's expression, uh, it was kind of like, well, yeah, uh, but not quite sure where that's coming from. And that's what Andy was referring to. So I don't feel in a position to... Uh, act on this until I know where and how the money to hire a person would come from. And the analysis of changing the funding sources is something that I can't just have an opinion on. Um, that's some, that there has to be some kind of very thorough financial presentation on that, whether it is or is not possible. So I'm just saying, I don't see how we can make a decision on this now, but um, correct me so, if people disagree. So maybe what I'm initially hearing is maybe we need to today's discussion come up with things and information we would like to either have provided or a per person potentially, maybe the town manager, to potentially attend a meeting to discuss mm -hmm. this with us before we can make a recommendation and report back to the council. So maybe that's where our conversation today best lies is identifying mm -hmm. all of that in order for us to be able to work towards bringing that back on December 4th or December 20th, I think, is our two meetings in December. Um, so does that sound like a fruitful way to have this discussion? Dave. Yeah, again, absolutely. I think, I think that's the right direction to go. Um, I was not at the meeting Monday night, although I watched a good portion of the meeting, um, particularly on the ECAC recommendations. Um, I did not hang in there for the entire parking discussion. Um, <laughs> although I, I'm sure it was riveting. Um, probably shouldn't put that in the, in the minutes, but it's now on tape. But anyway, it's important. Um, um, I guess my question, would, 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 would you as the CRC want, are you satisfied with the information you got from Jeff Kravitz and the Downtown Parking Working Group on Monday night, or would you like Jeff to come in to talk more about these recommendations because from a timing standpoint, again, I can talk with Paul, but I'm not sure, you know, all, as, as Dorothy mentioned, all three of these have budgetary implications. Um, we're right at kind of the beginning of our budget cycle, so I'm not sure what more the town manager could provide during the month of December with regard to a, a potentially new position, number one, enterprise fund to benefits district, that, you know, that's more of a discussion, how, what are the, what's the mechanics of that, and then signage. Um, certainly, we do have some things in the works with regard to signage. Um, we have welcome, welcome signage in the works and budgeted um, a more robust parking signage uh, program could be discussed. So I'm just kind of wondering, do you need more information from Jeff? Would that help in your discussion? It seems to me that 
you might at the end of this make a recommendation to the town manager, do you support the three recommendations of the downtown parking working group? And that could then feed into the town manager's budget um, consideration. Steve. Yeah, so of the three, I think the most interesting and maybe even the most relevant to this particular committee is the parking benefit district because um, as someone mentioned that we, we, this committee, we can be the generators of, or the proposers of policy or bylaw changes or, I mean, this could be a zoning bylaw, it could be, it could be a number of different, you know, a number of different things. So in a way that's the most interesting, the most CRC related, the human resource part, the parkings are, or that's a really interesting idea, but I'm not sure how we can add more to that. And then the wayfinding is, so, so in order of what I think is relevant to this, I think the parking benefit district, definitely. Parking's a no. The, the other one, wayfinding, yes-ish, because you know, it, in a way, um, there's no particular policy or no particular measure that we would, you know, be involved with. So we also have to be careful not to be, so we're not the finance committee, so the finance committee is the one that is looking at the budget implications of all of the above, but we are the, kind of the, the group that's working with the planning board, the group that's working on, you know, sort of land use, land use issues. Uh, we're, we're public way issues too, and so signage yes. relates to that. Um, so, so let's. What I'm hearing is, we need, in order to have a, a robust discussion about the parking benefit, the second recommendation, the one about dedicated funding source, um, and how that might affect public transportation and public ways in general, and and transportation in general. Um, downtown stuff, land use, you, you name it, um, which is what this committee deals with. I think we need more information and, and frankly might be helpful to have our economic development director here who was the liaison to the downtown parking working group to talk about the distinctions between the transportation fund, what a parking benefits district would look like, how that would be, could they not be separate, could they, you know, sort of a, a much more in-depth discussion about the those two things, because I think many of us are unclear about that, and that that would help us figure out a recommendation to the council on that recommendation from the downtown parking working group as it relates to our CRC charge. Um, so let's talk about signage. What information might we need in order to have a nice discussion about recommendation number three, the one about signs and website. Dorothy. All right, the, I am very surprised that that was added because uh, I went to a couple of the parking meetings and found there were many interesting suggestions. They have not been accepted. Many of them are, are um, there's argumentation about, but there, you can't do signs until you know where the signs are leading you to. So for example, one of the things they mentioned was there are pockets of private parking uh, around town. It's a possibility that the town could negotiate with private property owners for some kind of cooperative use of them, say at certain times of day when they're not in use for their business or their workers. And that um, there, uh, for example, another suggestion that was made, and I believe I made this one, which was the whole, they were very concerned about where the workers were parking, were the workers parking in front of businesses and therefore making it impossible for customers to come in. If in fact the workers, uh, the owners of different buildings uh, had arrangements with some of these private pockets of parking, that that's where their workers could park, that would free up the parking in front. They talked a lot about the new parking apps, which the fact that I don't know how to use one, I do know that once we get our parking straightened out, I will be using one and that we're moving towards that, that there, but right now they said, you can't find out where even town parking is. People don't know, people from the outside don't know. The whole network of downtown parking has got to be dealt with in a comprehensive way by somebody 
that really focuses on it. They made many suggestions, some of which I think we could get accepted. The suggestion of increasing the, the fee for parking longer has met a really strong opposition from the um, business downtown. Uh, the other idea, the idea of having meters be on until 8 o'clock is also great pushback everywhere. So uh, the fact that there's completely inconsistent signing everywhere and that people don't know that permitted spots can be used in the evening, that can be alleviated through physical signs and through a comprehensive plan done by computer savvy people who have put that inside as part of the parking app. But none of that exists now. So I would certainly not want to have new signage done until it is decided what aspects of the, rec of the study, and they have many, are going to be applied and how, and get that agreed upon. Then, when there's some coherence uh, in our downtown parking plan, then we could do unified signage, both physical and through uh, you know, our little phone apps. So I, I don't see us acting on number three right now. So what no, no, what what I what I think the information then we need is based on that is whether signage can be done piecemeal is it something that um, needs a comprehensive approach initially or can we come up with or is it worthwhile in in terms of so information about the benefits of waiting to do signage until other stuff is done or you know benefits drawbacks of that versus doing some of it now. Um, with what we have and that conversation and maybe some information and I'm still working in my brain what that information might look like about um, implementing some new signage with where parking is now and how easy that might be to then modify and stuff like that. Um, Steve. Yeah, so not to, not to redo the study, but we're in a weird limbo land here where we were in a way we're expecting that the only which is controlled by the town, but other communities like Boston, the public parking signage and the public parking reference simply means places that you as you can park for a you know for a fee or for free, and it's completely silent on whether or not it's owned by the municipality or owned by by private. So I think that what one of the things the report is trying to do is to encourage entrepreneurship of private parking lot owners to basically, there's nothing that would, well, actually, it's probably a zoning issue, but to, if they have a daytime business, to maybe open up that business, those parking lots at night or vice versa for parking for a fee. You know, so that has not happened to my knowledge in Amherst. There's no privately run public parking lots but that would be one way of unlocking, you know, unlocking the, what may or may not be a parking issue. Um, Dorothy. So this brings us back to number one. The reason we don't know the answers to this is that we don't have any place or one person that's in charge of parking. And I think, although there is the financial issue, I think maybe if we worked on number one first, getting a person, a place where these things are dealt with, that we could then move forward on some of the others. Andy. Yeah. You know, I did go back and um, look at the actual report from Nelson Nygaard on that subject, and um, it's not suggesting that a new full-time person be appointed to that position, what it is saying is that somebody from within town government be given the management responsibility, so it's sort of change of job description as opposed to creation of a position, and uh, which is why I made the comment earlier that, um, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's a, um, something that we really ought to be thinking about, we re really ought to be doing, but um, it does involve um, discussion with the executive branch. Um. It, it would involve potential discussion there. It might also involve discussion with our ad hoc goals committee, as I think was 
was mentioned at the town council meeting of some of the stuff that does fall within sort of the executive budgetary side um, that we as counselors and legislators don't have a lot of control over, if we believe it's important enough, then maybe it needs incorporated into the town manager's goals for the year. And so I think that's one way we can potentially either frame the discussion here at CRC or <clears throat> when we report back to the council, report back with a recommendation that that particular item or these items actually be moved to, instead of the CRC committee for discussion, a different committee for discussion. That can also be part of our recommendations and report back to the council of after looking at our charge and these priority recommendations, we don't believe we're the right committee to have all of them. Um, that, that's certainly part of it and it sounds like at least for item number one, that might be our recommendation is that it, item number one, bye Steve, item number one doesn't belong in CRC. Mm -hmm. um, that, at least that's what I'm hearing from the, the rest of this committee right now that we're not sure that's where this one belongs. Mm -hmm. um, and then the question would be which committee do we recommend it go to for a more robust discussion? Well, but I think that the, the, what Andy had mentioned that it's really the uh, town manager, the executive, who would be in the position. We're in, no, no council committee is in a position to, I think, to tell him which person can add this to their job by shifting you know, job responsibilities around. Um, but I think it was a good focus. If we don't have to come up with a new budget line, we just need to specify a person. Because our parking discussion at the town council meeting revealed that we just don't, at this time, we don't know who's doing what, we don't know how to go proceed. We know we've got many, many problems and a lot of questions. Sounds like, oh, Dave. So again, I'm looking for a little direction. Would the committee like Jeff Gravitz to attend your next meeting if this is an agenda item to discuss certainly number two, enterprise fund uh, slash uh, parking benefits district and maybe a little bit on signage. I certainly have been involved in downtown signage so we, we can gather some information from the planning department on that. So I'd be happy to have Jeff, you know, see if we can coordinate schedules for Jeff to attend your next meeting if the chair would like this to be an agenda item. So I, I have to look at the agenda to see when we might have time for this, but I think what I'm hearing from my committee members is that we would like Jeff to attend to really delve into this parking benefits district transportation fund. Um, from the CRC non sort of financial, you know, obviously finance is gonna end up into this, but it's it's not really the finance, it's it's the function of, of it, yeah. Um, and then also as to signage, some of the notes I had wrote, w written in terms of, and, and I think you'll probably be able to address this more and I can speak with you, were things like what's in progress, you mentioned there's, there's already some downtown signage going on. Um, What's that look like? What's it intended to do? You know, what can be done on that? Um, whether signage is something that's beneficial done in this piecemeal manner, as Dorothy was mentioning. Um, and then if we get the private, quote, public parking, one of the things that, when Steve was talking about that, that hit into my mind was if we've got this coordinated signage and coordinated sign view and look, if a private lot owner decides to make their signs public, is there a way we could somehow regulate what those signs look like so that all parking signs are similar, uniform, you know, no matter whether it's privately owned public parking or publicly owned public parking. And so some, some discussion of maybe that as it relates to the signage recommendation that we're gonna have to report on or knowledge of what that might look like might be helpful. Andy. Yeah, no, I, I think that uh, having Jeff attend would be great. I would not limit it to the two issues. I would include all three issues. Um, the, and actually it's interesting because the sentence in the report from Nelson Nygaard on the parking management leader 
is parking management leaders should be empowered to make decisions regarding parking management, negotiate shared parking agreements and other partnerships and lead parking communications and advocacy efforts. Um, so he might have done some thinking about subjects of like what a job description would be and how the negotiation takes place um, since that the suggestion is that it fall within the responsibilities of the whoever would be designated for this position. On the other hand, um, he's really our leader in communications with the business community. Uh, so it would be very interesting to have his comments on all three. And again, Dave. out of respect for the chair, I would think we would want to invite Christine Gray Mullen yes. as well. So yes. I can take care of both of those okay. invites. Anything else on this topic for now? Well, uh, there's the whole question of parking has many aspects. And primarily it was talking about, well, it's a, it's a whole interlock system which, which goes into our residential streets as part of it. In our, in our discussion <coughs> um, and Monday uh, and some subsequent discussions, it's clear that there are parking problems all over uh, town, but particularly in the downtown area, and that when talking with different members of the council with um, some of the staff, everybody has a different idea, and there is absolutely no um, uniformity of opinion of what to do because this has not really been talked about in an organized manner. And uh, part of the Nygaard report did mention that it's a whole interlocking system. So there's a lot of reason that we have to move ahead. There's a great community pressure to make some sense out of the parking plan. So I, I would really like to see us come together on this. And I think, I think perhaps step one is finding out who is a person that's gonna be the one who knows it all because it turns out we've been working uh, at opposites with each other. Um, we'd, I'd meet with Paul and a committee of residents and um, the police chief and they would say, oh no, that suggestion doesn't work. And then Lynn would meet with them and she would suggest another one that the others said wouldn't work because we had never really talked about it amongst each other. So that we really do need to get some, to get a plan. And at this point I almost, well I do care what it is. But it has to make sense, and it has to fit in with other pieces. So it's, it's a very important issue. Yeah, so I will point out that the referral from the council was both the full study and the memo, but that we had a requirement to report back in 90 days on the priority recommendations. And so I will reiterate what I think I said at the town council meeting, that we'll first deal with these three, get them off our table, follow the referral, comply with the referral, and then what at this point, and I'll have to go through the parking report again, um, but you, you had the nice implementation grid. What we might want to do with that is once we've done this is figure out where each of those strategies belongs in government. Okay. Does it belong in our committee? Does it belong in a different committee? Does it belong in an executive committee? Does it belong with an executive staffer or not? And then come up with that sort of grid of recommendations to the town council of you referred the whole study we think these should be sent back to this person for mm -hmm. implementation or this group should be dealing with that or this right. and and go in with sort of a comprehensive to the town council um, right. look that right. way because um, some of it certainly will come back to us even if we say it needs to be with someone else first because right. it comes to the council for a public permanent public way change or fee change, um, and then it would probably get referred to us. So that, that's sort of where I am. Let's start with these three, fulfill that mm -hmm. portion of our right. referral, and then move on from that. I suspect parking will likely be, at uh, this study report or something dealing with parking and public way, will likely be a regular agenda item on this committee's agenda, yeah. um, not, not a every three months, but potentially every meeting. Yeah for at least a 15, 20 minute discussion of something and all. So that, that's where I see us going as, as the chair. Any other thoughts on this for now? So I'll work with Dave to 
to make sure we know exactly what we're looking for for the next time it's up, which will likely be next meeting. That, and, and I had promised at the beginning of this meeting that we would offer public comment on this matter. There are no public here, so that is the offer of public comment. Um, that brings us to an action item. I didn't know where to put this in discussion or action. I'm not sure it will actually take an action. But um, as mentioned at the town council meeting on Monday night by George Ryan, uh, the governance organizational legislation committee chair, um, he has asked all the chairs of the standing committees of the council to um, give him feedback for the governance organization and legislation committee as it embarks on a annual review of the town council committee structure. Um, I am a fairly new chair to this committee. Um, I obviously have potentially my own opinions on the charge of this committee, but I felt we should ask, I should survey and have a nice discussion of our entire committee on what we thought about this charge, our scope of charge, numbers of members, and anything about the charge in terms of as it relates to town council structure. So the charge itself was referenced in our packet. Um, ev everyone should, in theory, have a copy of it somewhere. Um, so, so let's, and, and hopefully we can have a nice discussion about the CRC committee as it relates to essentially committee structure in town council and our thoughts on the charge itself. So that, to interpret that, that would mean, are there parts that we should do that are not here that we would take from another committee or parts that we think we should give to another committee? Is that it? That, that would certainly be part of the discussion if we think it, it's overbroad, not broad enough, to include not, all of that, but also potentially number of members, number of liaison, uh, and anything about the charge. But I think the bulk of our discussion should sort of be about sort of the responsibilities of the charge. Okay. So I have, I have, most of what's here, we've just already been talking about today. Uh, planning, zoning, land use, master plan, community and economic development, including arts and culture. We didn't do arts and culture, but that's on our agenda at some point. Housing mix, housing affordability, neighborhoods. Well, I guess I don't see parking anywhere here, but <clears throat> Public that, ways. Public ways, okay. Um, the one that I'm looking at that I'm thinking that we, we haven't been bombarded with recently uh, is po policies regarding the relationship between the town and Amherst institutions of higher education. So I'm just bringing this up for discussion because um, the rest of it is about land, public ways, public resources, housing, homelessness, business, economy, quality of life. And that's the one that's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Now, is that something then that you think, in having worked with this committee and been on the committee for about six months now, I think mm -hmm. is when this charge was adopted, March, yeah, um, a little over six months now, that might be an outlier and something that should be removed from the charge? Well, I'm is just, that the I'm suggestion just, or just I'm asking. Okay. I'm, I'm saying I can't see giving away any of the others. Okay. Because that's really kind of what we do and what we have been doing. But I'm just really asking you and Andy what you think about that. Andy? I'd be hesitant to take it out even if we're not actively working on it at the moment because it's such an important issue to the community yeah. and uh, we don't want it to be homeless mm -hmm. in and of itself. And uh, so I, and I don't know what the vision is yet, and I think that that's something that um, needs to need some further discussion is, uh, for example, um, I know that uh, negotiations are continuing with the university about a new strategic partnership agreement and um, that's really an executive function, but um, should be reported back to the council. 
Um, and uh, so what is the process that um, is envisioned to whether it should, that will, will then first take place in committee and then uh, before going to the council or go directly to the council and maybe the uh, chair is vice president of the council and needs to consult with the president on what her vision is of that. Um, that's certainly the one that's on the um, horizon most readily. There's so much of what we do that relates so strongly to the university that it's really hard to say that it belongs entirely in any one place, but I don't want to not have it listed for some committee, and this seems to be the most logical one. Th that was actually going to be my question. Is this the most logical one for that? As Dorothy said, um, it seems to be the outlier of sort of the rest of the list on section A of the charge, um, the review and make recommendations that you've got housing, you've got a lot of stuff that relates to land use and develop, you know, planning. Mm -hmm. And then you've got this relationship, as they say, the relationship policies regarding the relationship. Is that something that potentially, I mean, I, I'm now of the three GOL members on this committee, I'm the only one left here, um, but governance and organization has the, their charge relates to internal governance, but governance around the town governance, you could potentially make an argument that this one policies related to the relationship between the town and the institutions of higher education could potentially be moved into that committee um, as sort of related to governing, as I'm just imagining any discussion um, that might be had on any potential partnership agreements or anything like mm -hmm. that would relate more around to government services and government structure and potentially funding different, mm -hmm. um, you know, things that you know, all the funding could f potentially fall within finance, but it could also fall within sort of the governance portion mm -hmm. of, you know, um, the GOL charge rather than what that discussion might look like here. And so that's something we could potentially recommend is remove that portion out to a different committee. So uh, as I was listening to you, I think that that, in terms of the agreement, I think that that doesn't really quite belong in our committee. But when we talk about land use, housing, uh, homelessness, arts and culture, in fact, we're coming up against the university needing to be working with involving, but not in terms of the plan and relationship between the university. But, I mean, for example, um, the new public-private partnership um, dormitory that's gonna be built by the university impinges on, on my district very strongly. Mm -hmm. So that's the way in which, uh, you know, how, uh, you know, housing policy is affected by the student population. That belongs in our committee. So many things to do with the university it was just the wording of this, which seemed yeah. to be more the agreement, which as I, th I think maybe that might be better in GOL, but we do need a sentence in here, just like you say, uh, you know, sustainability has to be everywhere. Well, for CRC, the university is, and, and our relationship or how it impacts, maybe the word impact, mm. it has to be in here. Just so I would really just suggest a, a rewording of, of that because, yes, all these things that we're doing, we do have to deal with the university, but it's piecemeal the way we would be doing in CRC, not the big relationship. So, though, Andy, you may disagree with me on that. Trying to think about all of the different things that we have done that involve relationships with um, the university, and it really is large because it's such a big piece. Having been a um, former select board member who served on the Campus and Community Coalition, which is now being undertaken um, on a less formal basis by uh, George, Ryan, the, um, you know, the kinds of things we would discuss there really get into the um, issues that are very much, um, the, the effect of the student population on our neighborhoods. And um, 
that's where the, that coalition and its work has come about. And some of the things that we have done over the years um, of creating the Nuisance House Bylaw and the Rental Registration Program and other things, some of that arose through the Campus and Community Coalition to try and address what was agreed to as mutual problems. Um, and they've really, you know, to the, ex to the extent that their problems with those is because they need to be strengthened um, in some fashion. And uh, so it's a, uh, these are um, complex issues, but they really do bridge very much on things that we talk about within this committee and uh, how to define the pieces that belong where becomes difficult. So I'm not sure I have an easy answer. So uh, the question I have, you know, I, is this is a lot, you know, I look at this charge and I go with, um, we as a council, when we take up any measure, almost all of it needs to come to this committee based on this charge. There's really nothing from a policy viewpoint that this charge doesn't encompass. Um, there's been a few policy writings, but but in terms of if a policy is proposed or if a measure is proposed, you can almost always find a relationship to planning, zoning, land use, public ways, public resources, housing, homelessness, higher ed institutions, master plan, local economy. I mean, that's, that's you're, you're always, it is, to me, I look at that and I go, is this really the only committee of the council that should be dealing with um, sort of recommendations on and, and delving into the effects on the town of pretty much policy? And that's right now the way I read this charge is this is the only committee, well, that any, any delving into effects on that of the town on a policy that is proposed or a measure that is proposed this is the committee it comes to. That's a, to me, a huge charge, but a huge burden potentially on the members of this committee, whoever they end up being, being the sole sort of group that does that initial evaluation. Um, not only a burden on the five members, but it also, as I think we've seen in town council, creates a um, potential you know, tension between those that are on this committee that are getting to have those big discussions on a regular basis versus those that are not that get that discussion presented to them at a town council meeting mm -hmm. for the final sort of brief discussion. Right. And is, is this something that, you know, it's always hard maybe to give up that, that sort of desire, but is this something that maybe would be better I, and I don't know what that split would look like, but would it be potentially better for the council as a whole to f figure out or recommend, you know, have a two committees that actually delve into sort of those impacts on the town matters? Um, what that split might look like if we were to recommend that or at least mention that as a potential concern of this committee that it is so comprehensive. Um, I don't know, um, but I'd like thoughts on that because as chair, I can say, when, when we have, say, that downtown parking, can we get it on the next agenda? And I'm like, at the agenda, I've, we've already got five or six huge referrals sitting on us that each could probably take two hours of discussion minimum at any one meeting to then figure out how to do that is, is stressful, I will say. <laughs> so I, I think that the, the really, the, the major thing about this committee, committee is that you cannot talk about housing, business, and parking in separate committees because it's our task to try to, they're all so interwoven, we have to do them together. Um, so in terms of the, uh, I think that, that we could, the university impacts what we do, but the 
relationship that's formally done, which we don't know any details about this, the ongoing process now, between the town and the university, that's not what, how we relate to the university in the daily, weekly analysis of these problems. I mean, of course it's part of it, but I don't think we should be, I, don't, I think that's something, that negotiating that doesn't need to be in this committee. But I don't want to separate business, parking, land use, and housing because you have to look at all of them together. But it, I mean, for example, the, the problem on, um, in my district, so you look and you say, okay, we've got bicycle lanes that's got to do with sustainability. It's got to do with who's biking. It has to do with it's the main road, uh, Lincoln the main road going to the campus. Um, it's where students, how students are interspersed within our community, how we deal with that. These are, these are big issues and I think that CRC is the right place to deal with it. It is a challenge, but so I, I really would hate to say, well, let's give economic development to someplace else because the housing, homes, community, neighborhood, and business have got to be dealt with in a cohesive way. We luckily don't have to solve any of these problems. We just have to make recommendations and then the council can thrash it out. Andy? I think that we need to go back to the top sentence there, review and make recommendations to the council on matters referred to the CRC regarding. And um, going to some of the things that we've talked about in this conversation, um, whether it be a change in parking on Lincoln Avenue, whether it be a modification of the nuisance house bylaw, whether it be the new um, renegotiated strategic partnership agreement, those aren't things that we're spending time trying to create the pro um, a process. We're, um, it's a recognition that if something is going to come before the council that some committee needs to take ownership over taking some time to think it through and make a recommendation. Uh, and I think that if you sort of understand that and look at it from that perspective, it's a little less daunting than if you think that we own the issue and have to be the creators of the change. I don't know that that's really what was intended. So I will just point out to then number D on the second page that allows us to be the creators. Um, Right, it says we may offer policy and other recommendations within our pur the its purview, CRC purview for town council discussion and consideration. So, um, obviously, given A, we likely won't have time to do D um, because A is so comprehensive. And I guess that's where my concern comes in is that A is so comprehensive because the nearly anything that comes in front of the council, you can make an argument, should get referred to CRC for recommendations, that does not necessarily allow time for this committee to identify a problem, mm -hmm. discuss it, consider it, and then make on its own a recommendation on that identification. We become much more of just a reactive committee, mm -hmm. and maybe that's what this committee wants to be, um, but the question is if we want to be both a reactive and a proactive committee, that's I guess where I see this charge as being too comprehensive on the matters we deal with. So thoughts on that? <laughs> well, I like the word may. Uh, that was put in there, uh, I didn't write this, um, but it was put in there because there may come a time when this is something we wanna do. But as you point out, we're not gonna have much time to do that, but I think leave it in. We will be spending most of our time on other things, but um, I'd hate to take it out. Andy? Yeah, it may be that we, what we really need to be reporting back is, is it uh, just what we're getting at. It's very broad and that um, we don't, know that we are going to be in a position to really offer policy and other recommendations in each of these areas and uh, because they're so broad and that uh, if GOL feels that there needs to be a body 
that is actually engaged in creating recommendations for change um, to put that exclusively in the responsibility of this committee with such a, so many different areas that D is really where the maybe our largest concern is. It's, it's easy to uh, it's easier to react to a specific recommendation. Um, these three things have been proposed by the downtown parking working group. Look at them, then take ownership, then then to uh, deal with the entire parking system as a whole. Dorothy. So we can recommend that we a position be created to deal with the parking system as a whole, and we can be supportive and send information and questions to that person. So the, our, our role would be to deal with it by, in a way, moving that out of us. And I think that's a good idea. I don't think we want to be the weekly park link, parking committee. But right now, we don't have, we just don't have a coherent policy. So it's, that has to be dealt with. So I, I want to delve into what Andy just said about um, maybe the issue is D and not A. What would splitting D out to multiple committees look like? Um, you, you know, I, I guess I, I'm, I'm having a hard time wording this because if you split D out and say all committees have the ability to make recommendations and offer, and what's the wording, offer policy and other recommendations for the town council discussion and consideration, but if you're going to say within its purview and we're the only committee that has that her view, it, to me, they're 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 combined. If you're if you want the proactive, but the proactive to only come out of the committee that deals with the reactive on the regular basis, how do you split D out of our charge without limiting our charge a little bit and pushing some of that to some other committee? So uh, that's that's uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, I think that this may be the GOL discussion that it needs to have because what it really comes down to is, is that um, it put a lot of things on this committee and we can be reactive to things that are specifically referred to us, but to take that um, leadership role in creating discussion and consideration of policy on all of these different areas is probably not realistic. On the other hand, GOL's problem is, is that creating an additional committee is not exactly an easy solution either because in the um, end there's only as many number of counselors as exist and uh, that we're all overtaxed as it is. And I think that that's really um, a significant issue that we as a council need to at some point deal with as to how we make um, this function well and at the same time not burden individual counselors to such a great extent that nobody's ever going to run for this job again in two years mm -hmm. and uh, that we end up with a council that is going to be people who um, uh, the community uh, may not find as being the right people because we've created an unbearable position. I think it, it, that's really what we're struggling with as a council as a whole and I think GOL by undertaking the review of the committees uh, really does, I appreciate they're taking it on but that's where the crux of it is. Yeah. So let me, we're, we're almost out of time here so I want to go back to just mention this and ask thoughts, because um, I know it had been brought to the council at one point specifically for this committee, which is the size of our committee. Mm -hmm. Do we have any recommendations regarding size in terms of reduce, increase, not that, uh, ha having been operating for a while, um, thoughts? Oh, there were discussions on this, and I can't recreate them all, but I'm trying to prompt Andy's mind. And it was that if we got bigger, somehow we'd be too much of the council. It was, there was 
we had a lot of discussion about this. Um, and therefore, it was decided that we should not get bigger because it, it all had to do with, um, okay, so there's, if there's five of us, is that right? Yes. And is there a committee that's bigger than five? No, and I think that the answer was that um, we're at five. If you go to six, then you have an even number. And um, the question is, do you risk tie votes? Probably not in any um, frequent basis um, that would that happen. If you get to seven, you get to then your quorum of the council. And does every meeting have to be posted as a council meeting also? Um, and so you have um, significant issues when you start creating committees that in the, themselves constitute a quorum of the council. And um, that's where the five ultimately comes into is it's the lowest odd number that is below seven. And, and there's, there was pressure because there's some people who had wanted to join the committee too. And then there was, it, it was going to end up that the committee membership was going to overlap the finance committee membership too much. And so although there was some unhappiness, we ended up saying it's better just to stay the way we are. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I can convey whatever that size is since I knew there was a discussion there and I was not part of that. So, okay. So we're not recommending any change in the number. And I will convey the rest of this discussion as best I can. Um, Pat was not here today. I asked her for her opinion. I was checking my email to see if um, she had some. Um, I have not heard back, so because I did not want to miss her. I had forgotten Steve was going to leave earlier, else I would have done the same. He yeah. does sit on GOL, so as this mm -hmm. discusses multiple times in GOL, he'll be able to, to weigh in. Pat does too, but um, I still would have asked George. So I think, no, George, Steve. And so, yeah, that's what I'll do. I thank you all for your input and thoughts on that. It is very helpful as we will go into a GOL discussion on committees. With that, is there any um, item not anticipated by anyone? Dorothy. I just want to ask Dave, uh, our font of wisdom, if there is something that we should be thinking about or um, something that's coming up that's going to be important. I mean, it's true, our, our minds are over full. Looking in my crystal ball, are you saying, I really think what I was just rereading a minute ago, all the things that have been referred to CRC and, and that are kind of pending and, and upcoming at our December 4th meeting and then subsequent meetings. So I think your, 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 your card is full. Um, I think this master plan discussion is very, very important. Just referring back to something Mandy said an hour and a half ago, um, we're looking at the master plan process, whatever that, whatever that is decided to be, in relation to zoning. So at some point, CRC will need to kind of engage with the planning board and the zoning subcommittee on zoning. So that's, that's one thing that's on my crystal ball that Mandy and I have been talking about. So I, that's the one thing I would add. It's very, very important um, is zoning. Is that mentioned here? Yes, it is. Yeah, Planning, so, zoning, and, and land and, use and, policies. And, and we did the, the, the twin to the direction to work jointly with the planning board on updating and adopting the master plan was a direction to work with the planning board to recommend a plan for approaching zoning bylaw revisions. That was, was done last night, uh, not last night, Monday night, um, as a direction to CRC. So it, will, it was not something I wanted to deal with the planning board, the master plan portion before we get to the zoning yeah portion of that, um, so that's why, but, but that is one of the referrals that we're sitting on right now. Right now, by my count, we have one, two, three, four, five, six outstanding referrals. We sent a seventh, the housing priorities policy, back to the council mm -hmm. and have completed work on that one. Um, so we're going to work through them. My guess is more might be coming um, mm -hmm. as, as things move on, but, but we're sitting at six right now, um, and I'm trying to juggle those. 
So with that, um, anything else? Andy, yes. No. Oh, no, nothing? Okay. So with that, we are going to adjourn at 1022 in the morning. <laughs>